totally nuts? Elon Musk aims to put a starship in orbit in six months. Here's SpaceX's plan. The landmark orbital flight will likely be made by the fourth or fifth full-size starship prototype. Here's the animation video. establishing a city to establish a city or on the moon of Mars. This is a vital step. SpaceX will soon have a whole fleet of shiny silver Starship prototypes if all goes according to plan. On Saturday, September 28, Elon Musk gave his annual update about Starship and Super Heavy, the reusable spacecraft and rocket, respectively, that the company is building to help colonize Mars. The presentation took place at SpaceX's South Texas site, near the village of Boca Chica, and prominently featured the 165-foot-tall Starship MK-1, the first full-size Starship prototype, whose assembly was completed just days before Musk's talk. One test flight prototype preceded the MK-1, a short and stubby vehicle called Starhopper, which was retired in late August. SpaceX's Starship MK-1 prototype left stands next to one of the Falcon 1 rocket first stages at the company's South Texas site. Launching Starships SpaceX aims to launch the stainless steel MK-1 on an uncrewed, 12-mile-high test flight in the next month or two, Musk said. And a much more ambitious jaunt should follow in relatively short order. I mean, this is going to sound totally nuts, but I think we want to try to reach orbit in less than six months," Musk said on Saturday. But the MK-1 won't make that milestone flight. That distinction will likely go to the MK-4 or MK-5 Starship iteration, the billionaire entrepreneur added. Watch SpaceX Starship vs. Millennium Falcon in size comparison explains video. So this, this gives you a sense of, of size. Um, so the little pixels there, that's a, little, little pixels are a human. Um, and then there's the hopper next to it, the Millennium Falcon, for comparison. Um, then Starship, which is what you see before you. And then that's what it look, will look like with the full stack, which is almost two and a half times as tall as this vehicle. This simulation will give you a sense of the, the scale of things. It slightly reminds me of the scene from Spaceballs.
Starship MK-2 is already under construction at SpaceX's Cape Canaveral facility, on Florida's Space Coast, and should be finished within the next couple of months at most, Musk said. Competition between the teams at Boca Chica and the Cape should end up improving the final Starship design, the SpaceX founder and CEO have said. SpaceX plans to begin building the MK-3 at Boca Chica in about a month, and that prototype will likely be ready to fly about three months from now, Musk said. The MK-4 will take shape in Florida shortly thereafter, and it could end up being the first Starship vehicle to circle Earth. Ambitious Timeline Like most of Musk's plans, these construction timelines are quite ambitious. Musk has called his timelines aspirational in the past. SpaceX spent a lot of time on the MK-1, after all, construction work on that vehicle goes all the way back to at least December 2018. But the company has learned a lot in the intervening time, so getting a Starship to orbit by the spring of 2020 should be achievable, Musk said. Provided the rate of design improvement and manufacturing improvement continues to be exponential, I think that is accurate to within a few months, Musk said of the orbital launch timeline. He did stress, however, that these target dates have not been rigorously vetted, I'm giving you just literally stream of consciousness here. Watch SpaceX Starship Update, Moon, Mars, Saturn, Dot and Aliens explains video. The so, we, we think it would be very exciting to have a base on the Moon. Um, e even if it's just a science base, um, that you know, we have, for example, we have a base uh, at Antarctica. Many, many countries have bases in Antarctica for science research, and this would be an incredible area of research. Um, so whether or not people want to live on the moon, there's definitely a lot of science to be done. Um, and uh, I think this is it's close as well. Um, so that's, that would be quite exciting to do. And then, of course, uh, we can go other, to other places in the solar system, like Saturn. Uh, and, uh, the, but the, the critical thing that we need to focus on, I think, is the fastest path to a self-sustaining city on Mars. This is the, this is the fundamental thing. Uh, you know, as, as far as we know, as far as we know, we are the only consciousness or the only life that's out there. There might be other life, but we've seen no signs of it. You know, people often ask me, if you, what, do you, what do you know about the aliens and that? And I'm like, man, I tell you, if I'm pretty sure I'd know, you know, if there were aliens. I have not seen any sign of aliens. Um, and uh, they're like, well, is the military hiding aliens in Area 51 or something, you know? Um, that's a popular meme. Um, yeah, well, let me tell you, the, the, biggest, the fastest way to increase defense funding would be to bring out, like, hey, we found an alien. People are like, ah, more money for defense, definitely. <laughs> this is guaranteed. They would try, that would be like on display in two seconds. So, um, now, so, so the, 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 the reality is, as far as we know, uh, this is the only place, at least in this part of the galaxy or in the, in the Milky Way, where there is consciousness. And it's taken a long time for us to get to this point. You know, according to the, the geological records, Earth's been around for about four and a half billion years, although it's mostly molten magma for about a half a billion years. So, but still, several billion years with um, at least bacterial life and multicellular life for several hundred million years. Um, but, but here's the interesting part, like, it, it, the, the, the sun is gradually getting hotter and bigger. And over time, uh, I, even in the absence of, of global warming, um, man-made stuff, the, the, the sun will he, um, expand and it will, it will overheat the earth. M my guess is probably, this is, on, on, on human time scales, this is a long time, but it's, there's only, you know, in several hundred million years left. That's all, that's all we got, okay, several hundred million years. Um, but but, it, but th sort of in, if, from an uh, evolutionary standpoint, um, basically if, if it took an extra 10% longer for conscious life to evolve on Earth, it wouldn't evolve at all because it would have been incinerated by the sun. So, so the, what I'm saying is that it, it's, it appears that consciousness is a very rare and precious thing and we should take whatever steps we can to preserve the light of consciousness. 
and the window, the window has been open. Only now, after four and a half billion years, is that window open. That's, that's a long time to wait, and it might not stay open for long. I, I'm pretty optimistic by nature, but there's some chance, there's some chance that window will not be open for long. And I think we should become a multi-planet civilization while that window is open. And if we do, I think the probable outcome for Earth is even better, if, because then you know Mars could help Earth one day. You know, and so I think we should really do our very best to become a multi-planet species and to extend consciousness beyond Earth, and we should do it now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. MK-1 and MK-2 Starship sport three of SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engines. Versions starting with the MK-3, however, will be powered by six Raptors, just like the final, operational Starship, which Musk has said will be capable of carrying up to 100 passengers. SpaceX's currently operational Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets use a different engine called the Merlin. SpaceX will probably need about 100 Raptors from here on out to get to orbit, counting the engines required for development and testing work, Musk said. But the tally will skyrocket when SpaceX starts building the Super Heavy, which won't happen until Starship MK-4 is done. Watch SpaceX Super Heavy rocket could have 37 engines video. The so, let's see, uh, going on to the booster, So the, the booster is designed to take up to 37 Raptor engines. I'm not sure if we'll go that high, but you can really um, you know, have a 31. I think like the minimum number you'd want is you know, maybe around 24. Um, but the, the booster is, is designed to be able to take uh, multiple engines out. So you can actually add or subtract engines as you'd like. You basically just need a lot of force pushing up. Um, over time, I think the pro you probably want around a 7,500-ton uh, force uh, rocket, um, which is about twice the thrust of a Saturn V, a little more than twice the th thrust, um, and, and, and on, on a roughly 5,000-ton uh, lift, lift gross liftoff mass. Uh, so for roughly one and a half uh, thrust to weight. Um, for a reusable rocket, you actually want a high thrust to weight rather than uh, it, with a, an expendable rocket where you want a low thrust to weight um, because a, any thrust to weight below one is not useful like if you if you if you have less thrust than your weight you don't move um, so you actually want a high thrust to weight for a reusable rocket this is a, a very important um, design optimization change um, so, so that's why I think you know more engine is probably good um, and, and getting up to around 7500 tons uh, over time uh, and a one and a half to one, one and a half thrust to weight ratio, uh, or more. So, and, and we're, we think we're probably going to adjust the grid fin design to be kind of like a, more of like a diamond shape. Um, it looks cooler. Uh, it works better too. <laughs> and then the, the rear fins are actually just legs. So they're not, um, they're not need, needed for stabilization or guidance. They're, they're essentially uh, there for, for legs. All right, so some, let's go into some of the development testing. So this is a Raptor firing.
Super Heavy has room for 37 Raptors, and at least 31 of those slots will likely be filled on each launch of the giant rocket, Musk said. The first stage of SpaceX's biggest operational rocket, the Falcon Heavy, uses 27 Merlin engines, 9 each on 3 attached boosters. Add that up, you've got a lot of engines, he said. So, spooling up the Raptor production rate is extremely important. Vital, obviously, essential to completing the booster. SpaceX is currently building one Raptor every 8 to 10 days but should pick up the pace markedly in the coming months, Musk added. The goal is to get to one Raptor per day by early 2020 at the latest. If the manufacturing and testing work all goes well, and SpaceX does indeed get a Starship prototype to orbit in six months or so, an even bigger milestone could follow in relatively short order. I think we could potentially see people flying next year, Musk said. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned something new.